Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Free Agent Podcast. Super lucky today. Got Shante Hooks. Shante, thanks for joining. Thank you for having me today. Super excited to be here. Yeah. Now, this topic is super interesting to me. Um, it's all around mindfulness, being present, and also, too, you know, you hear about the flow state. What the heck is the flow state? How do you get into a state of flow? Uh, and how do you utilize it? So I, I think this is a super interesting topic. Uh, it's super topical. You know, a few moments ago, we were talking about COVID. And I feel like mindfulness has been really interesting over the last three to five years. But even within the last year to six months, it's like exploded. And there's this huge market just around it. And that's that's what's so interested to talk to you because you're like an ex-CPA VP, like turned mindfulness and meditation consultant, and you even have your own company and your own brand. So CEO of Mindful Culture Creators, and that's trademark, by the way, people don't try to steal it. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about you. Like, how did you get into this space? Like, where'd you find the passion? Um, and what are you trying to accomplish with your with your consultancy? Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can get this down to like two minute, this two minute story of this interesting journey, um, which really began with me uh, starting out my career in accounting. Uh, I majored in accounting and started my career in, at PricewaterhouseCoopers doing public accounting and was never, I say that to say, I am a very logical, analytical, uh, you know, thinker, very numerical. Uh, and mindfulness and meditation was not something that I understood nor really believed in up until about maybe five years ago. And the catalyst for that, you know, it actually makes sense because I have a five-year-old son. So okay. it makes sense that around you almost that lost time, your mind and you had to exactly, say, that got to be a better way. Exactly. You know, having a child is a very transformative experience. Uh, and it, it brought out the best in me. I wanted to be my best self. I changed my diet. I started to do yoga. I started to take walks in the park, you know, things that I just, the softer side of life I tapped into. And that was sort of my entry point uh, into practicing mindfulness along with my father, who, uh, who actually practiced meditation pretty consistently uh, through his martial arts training. He was a professional kickboxer. Uh, okay. But even that didn't sway me into believing that it was something I could, you know, use in my life um, until life started to get hard. You know, I had, I had my son, uh, wasn't meditating at the time, but was, you know, just thinking about these things more intentionally. And I was promoted into a new role where I was uh, VP of transformation. So my job was to automate and identify automation solutions for manual processes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, automation AI is a big topic right now that, that you know, still frightens people. Uh, so if you could imagine the transformation leader coming into town, uh, you know, letting people know that their processes are going to be automated, they are afraid. Uh, and so that was a very challenging job, extremely stressful, not to mention an environment that was not very healthy. Uh, a lot of toxic toxicity, uh, a lot of microaggressions. Uh, it was the first time in my career that I really felt true sort of discrimination and racism in my in my department. And so uh, I needed something and mindfulness kept coming up, you know, is it, at that time, mindfulness was starting to experience its sort of like pop culture moment where sure. it was starting to be everywhere. And this is pre-COVID, uh, actually about six months before COVID. And uh, I just started to, you know, tap into it, you know, watch a video here and there on YouTube and, and try it out. And at first it was a struggle. I was one of those people that said, I can't do this. This isn't for me. I don't believe in it until I watched the thing. Right. Everyone has that thing that they saw, that thing that they read, and it finally clicked. Right. And, 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 and it's, it clicked because I finally understood the definition. Mindfulness is paying attention on purpose to the present moment with an attitude of non judgment. And so, really being able to, you know, put that in relatable terms, you know, take the mysticism out of it for a moment and just see it for what it is helped me to understand why I need, like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I understand why at my job, where my mind is always in a constant state of worry because I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think that my ideas are bright enough. Uh, I need something to bring me out of that fear, out of that past thought or that potential future worry and into the present moment. And mindfulness is the tool that helped me do it. Uh, and so I, I just started doing it and I made it a part of my lifestyle within like a six month period, uh, just in time for COVID. <laughs> and COVID hit, you know, obviously March of 2020. And by that time I was meditating every single day. I was practicing Qigong, which is a form of Tai Chi and really understanding energy in a way that was not only helping me in my personal life and to help and helping me to deal with COVID, but actually helping me in my job. I was identifying solutions to problems that did not, I did not see solutions before. And so I just started to talk about it. I started to share, you know, how I got into it, share my story. 
share my father's story. And uh, I started to do it in more larger and larger forums uh, to where I, I created a community, a community that started with five employees at uh, the, the bank that I was working for at the time, uh, started with five employees and grew within about around 12 months, grew to uh, 500 employees. And I was hosting live uh, mindfulness sessions and uh, and hosting uh, practice sessions uh, up to three times a month. And word kind of got out that I was the mindfulness person and teams, technology teams and finance teams were reaching out to me saying, hey, you know, our team is dealing with a problem. And I hear that you know how to explain this in a way that we can attach the solution to our problem with this method. So I started to do that. I started to take problems and, and explain how mindfulness could be a solution to that problem. And, and eventually it was like, I could do this. I, I, I love doing this. This is like my favorite thing to do. I wanna do this outside of these four walls of this organization. And so that's how, uh, that's the inspiration of how I created my company, Mindful Culture Creators. That's awesome. You know, I was gonna ask you a question about what did mindfulness look like five years ago, but you kind of answered that. It was interesting, especially, you know, um, with, with my buddies, like, you know, five years ago, mindfulness would have been like, oh my gosh, you're meditating. Like, what are you, what are you doing? And now like after COVID and where we are now, I feel like it's much more accepted and it's much more needed. And it's so easy to have these negative thoughts. I mean, we were talking about before the podcast started, like, you know, we're both entrepreneurs and it's really easy to get in your own way and have a negative thought process and not see the positive side. And I feel like mindfulness can really help you find your center um, and get away from those negative thoughts, which is really interesting. Um, but while you were talking, you're talking about meditating. And, and I was thinking to myself, you know, well, I, I don't really meditate, but I think I have my own kind of means of mindfulness. Like for me, taking a walk with the dog and like listen to a podcast, um, book on tape or even music to me, that's, that's a way to break free from, um, from the, 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 the day-to-day, -day, the negativity and, and, and find my center and my chi, if you will, yeah. uh, in order to get back and get productive. And I'd love to get your opinion on that specific example. Like is, is mindfulness kind of in the eye of the beholder? Cause I've never thought of it in that perspective until you were just talking. But to me, I guess maybe I am going through my own mindfulness journey, just not through meditation through other means. Yeah, congratulations for that aha moment, because that is exactly what I try to teach people. The, the number one thing that I've heard, and I've talked to probably <clears throat> around 10,000 people at this point uh, around this topic. And the number one thing that people think is that they can't meditate and or they are not mindful. And by definition, it's just not a true statement. Again, mindfulness is paying attention on purpose with an attitude of non-judgment. And so when you when you synthesize it that way, when you think of that definition, that means that, yes, you are being mindful in other areas of your life. Every time that you are practicing doing one thing at a time with your full attention, you are being mindful. Meditation is sort of the, the practice. It is the, the formal uh, environment that you set aside for yourself to be intentional about practicing mindfulness. And, and it is true that many people don't have that as a formal habit habit. However, if you are into fitness, if you are into art, if you are an entrepreneur and you are performing tasks, you know, with your full attention, understand that neurologically, the brain doesn't know whether or not you said, I'm going to sit down and actually do a meditation. Or if you said, I'm going to put all of my focus and attention on this one thing. Music is, a actu is actually a, an amazing entry point to mindfulness and meditation. And it is, it is the tool that I like to use the most to teach. Because, uh, you know, traditionally, when we think of practicing meditation or practicing mindfulness, we think about our breath, right? We think about listening to our breath or even listening to our thoughts. Slowing down is box breathing, right? Just like right, right. Yeah. Breathing techniques and things like that. And for many people that don't meditate, or especially for people that don't think they can, that can be tough, right? Because you've already told yourself that you can't do it. However, music is something that most of us listen to on a daily basis. And so you can take a song that you really enjoy uh, that, you know, and preferably something positive, right? Uh, you take that song and you make that the form of your meditation. And what I mean by that is you, every now and then I encourage people to take a song that they love and put their headphones on because it's really important to sort of close off a part, a portion of your outside em environment and even close your eyes and just listen to that, say four to five minute song with your full attention. Right. Yeah. And when you do that, you'll notice certain instruments. You'll notice different ways that the vocalist, you know, expresses the, 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 the lyrics if the song has lyrics. And, li and then you can actually apply that to your work. So, you know, you mentioned flow states. Right. And, and though that's the state of mind where you're just really in the zone, where you're really locked in and you're performing at a high, high level. Music is an excellent tool uh, to use to get into flow states for that reason. Neurologically, the brain sort of relaxes. 
right? And so you want to, in that case, you want to choose specific types of music that will allow your brain to be at a state where you're relaxed, but you're still focused. And so uh, there are certain types of music that are good for that. Techno music is actually one. Uh, jazz music is another. And, and really anything that is an instrumental uh, so that you don't, you don't get distracted by the lyrics. It's good if it's a song that you're not really emotionally attached to. Just something that's neutral, that allows you uh, to sort of calm your mind and get into that state of relaxation and focus. Because when those two meet, that's your flow state. Very, very interesting. And I, I want to circle back to this flow state and kind of maybe connect full attention with flow state because mm -hmm. uh, because giving somebody your full attention is is really difficult. Um, I, I I kind of, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for six years and and it about a year or two in, I realized that I'm I'm, I'm super distracted. And so I, I took off, like I, I, you know, turned off all notifications from my email. Yep. If I'm looking on something specific, you know, my phone's off, like for this podcast, my phone is literally off and in another room. Um, and so I, I found that's really helped me personally be attentive. Um, also too, my team knows that if I'm having a conversation with somebody and if they're on a call, don't text me, like don't try, try to distract me because it's really important to stay focused. Are there any other tools? And, and again, I think that's a good segue into flow state as well, because that probably leads into it. But are there any other tools that people can maybe adopt and adapt that would help them kind of give people their full attention or give a task their full attention when they're working on it? I mean, is it just about closing off outside distractions or is there something else you can do to get locked in? Because I've heard it like it takes 15 minutes to get focused mm -hmm. and anything can mess you up. And I'd love to hear yeah. your opinion on whether or not you even agree with the 15 minute rule. Yeah, no, no, I think that's just probably, uh, I think that can vary, uh, but I want to really emphasize what you said about being intentional about uh, removing distraction. Right. That's what you said, you know, in terms of moving your phone to another room, that's what you're doing. You're eliminating a potential distraction risk. And so uh, because I have a risk management background, I like to think of things in terms <laughs> of risk. Uh, you know, the risk that you have, you know, the goal is a flow state. The yes. risk is that is distraction. Right. And because we know that our phones are a distraction, our, our notifications are mm -hmm. a distraction. Exactly. Right. Distraction in my life. Exactly. You know, you have to be intentional about that. And many people don't do that. You know, it seems really, really simple. And I can only speak for myself. Right. You know, I don't always turn my phone off. I don't always put my phone in another room when I need to be locked in. And I allow I am allowing the distraction to happen. And yes, there's plenty of studies that say once you're distracted, it takes X amount of time or minutes to get refocused. And so you're constantly repeating that cycle. That is inefficient. And so step one to achieving a flow state is definitely do be intentional about eliminating distraction, calm the mind from the fear that you're going to miss out on something. Because that's one of the reasons we don't do that. We have some sort of FOMO that we're going to miss a call. We're going to miss a ping. We're going to miss this thing. And we have to be able to see the truth from fiction. Right. And so that's step one. And step two, you know, there, there are lots of lots of different ways, but a couple of techniques that I like to use. One is, and I have this sitting next to me, uh, my jump rope. So when I want to get uh, into flow state, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll grab my jump rope and I just start jump roping because jump roping is a synchronistic activity, right? If you think about it, you have to time your feet with your arms and with your body. You know, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, an activity that brings me center, right? And, and I, and while I'm jump roping, sometimes I'll say certain, certain affirmations, like I can solve this problem. I can do this. I can get through this report. Right. And just, you know, it's like 60 seconds. Like we're not talking about a long, arduous task. Athletes do this all the time. We, you know, men do this a lot, right. They'll just stop what they're doing and break out into pushups. Right. Yep. So, so really it's, this is a, a, a way of getting your blood flowing, getting your mind locked in. And so having, you know, that at your fingertips, um, obviously meditation, right? Meditating before you do a task that you need to focus on is a really, really good technique. And again, meditating doesn't mean a 60 minute, you know, meditation in the forest somewhere. It can be, you know, literally just mm -hmm. sitting still. You don't even need a sound. You don't need a, you don't need a guided app. You don't need a thing. You just sit wherever you are, you stop and you can set a timer because the mind for a new meditator five minutes or even 60 seconds could seem like 60 minutes, right? So you set a timer for 60 seconds up to five minutes and you just sit and you allow your thoughts to, to come and go like the clouds in the sky. You know, one thought will appear and then eventually it will move on and you notice it and you just practice that and that'll help you lock in. Uh, the last thing I'll say, you know, to really get into flow states, like I mentioned before, sound is really, really uh, important to me. So I have a playlist. I actually keep a playlist 
uh, and I call it flow state music. <laughs> and I'm a big hip hop person. So my flow state playlist includes instrumentals of some of my favorite hip hop songs. So uh, Tribe Called Quest. I have a couple of. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have a, a le electric relaxation to be exact. I mean, think about it. Electric relaxation. Even the name of that song kind of sort of invokes this idea of focus or activity, yet relaxation. And again, that's what flow state is. It's, the, it's, it's where we are hyper-focused, yet we are also relaxed. We're not panicking. And so I, I have I've, on YouTube, you know, you can just search instrumental of your favorite song. And sometimes there are content creators that'll extend it. So instead of it being a five minute track, it's actually a 60 minute track. And so you don't have to do anything. You just put that track on for 60 minutes and it'll just play on a loop for 60 minutes. And, and that allows you to actually sort of kind of have a time tracker for yourself. Like right. when that goes off, you can celebrate the fact that you were locked in for at least 60 minutes without distraction because you put your phone away, you got your blood flowing, you centered your mind with, with a couple minutes of meditation, and you put on sounds that allow you to get into that state of relaxation uh, meets focus. That's super interesting. You know, I like you wrote about be intentional with kind of, you know, eliminating distractions um, you also mentioned the activity. I'm I'm a big jump roper as well. I love jump roping. It's it's very cathartic. Like people think yes. of it as this very tough exercise, and it is tough. I mean, you get your your blood flowing and pound, you know, like minute for minute, it's harder than running a, a, a mile. But um, I really enjoy it because you do get into a flow, you get into a rhythm, um, and then you can get better and better and go longer and longer. And I haven't thought about it from that perspective that it does kind of calm you down. Mission mentioned push-ups too. I'm not an anxious person. When I first started my company, you know, you feel like everything's on the line. And so anxiety would be high when you're having calls. And I do recall like either listening to music, I would sometimes put on Wu-Tang Clan and some crazy yeah, stuff yeah, um, yeah. or do push-ups just to kind of like calm my body down, which is super interesting. Um, and the meditating is something that I, I do currently and I try to do it in the morning. Um, my, my alarm rings at 550, but I get up at six. And so I try to spend those 10 minutes just thinking about my day and honestly, positive affirmations. Like I'm really... Yes. Yes. Try to get myself like you're going to have a good day, like, you know, like things are good. You're you're so busy, which I used to think of a negative. But now I'm trying to spend that like you're so busy. That's actually a really good thing as an entrepreneur. You want to be busy, right? Yeah. So meditating and the playlist is, is really interesting to me as well. Um, so I appreciate those those tidbits. And that, that makes sense. And like, how can people kind of incorporate a flow state into part of their routine? I mean, is this something that that folks should maybe aspire to do daily, a couple times a day, weekly. Like to me, I equate flow state with like getting a body of work done, right? Mm -hmm. Like working um, on content. I want to be in a flow state, locked in focus. Like how can people start incorporating that? And can you do too many flow states? Like talk a little bit about kind of, you know, good uh, potential good routine. Yeah. You know, really, I like to think of this as habit stacking. You know, like we we have to understand that that what we are striving towards, especially as entrepreneurs, our lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. Right. So that when we so that life is not so much. OK, now I'm getting ready to work. So therefore, I have to get focused. If you think about it, we kind of want to be focused as much as we as much as we can. Right. Even when we're in when we're doing something pleasurable, if we if I am having a conversation with a loved one, you know, especially my five year old son, uh, I want to give him my full attention. Uh, I want to be present with him. Right. And so, you know, flow state is not something to achieve just from a working perspective. I like to think of it as, you know, it's a goal for life, you know, to the point where we're locked in, we're at, we're at our full attention, yet we're relaxed. Right. We're also relaxed. And so small habit stacking, you know, uh, is, is has really transformed my life. And what I mean by that mm -hmm. is started with uh, when I would drive into the office, I had about an hour commute uh, when I was going into the office and I would usually get to the office really, really early. And so I would sit in my car and I made this a habit. Every time I drove into the office in Alpharetta, Georgia, I would sit in my car and I would play a track. These are called binaural sounds. I and they're it. right. Yeah, they're just they're yeah. just sounds. Again, you know, we're trying to change our brain. We're trying to enact what they call neuroplasticity, which is really literally changing. You know, parts of your brain are growing in size. Parts of your brain are shrinking in size. And when you do certain things, you're you're shrinking your amygdala, which is your stress response. That's the part of your brain that controls your fight or flight light. You're shrinking that and you're simultaneously, depending on the activity that you're doing, you're growing your prefrontal cortex. Your prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that controls your decision making. And so again, you want to be doing things that put you in that state. And so obviously meditation, uh, practicing being, uh, being attentive, practicing just doing one thing at a time as much as you can, you know, having 
having cues. Something you said, uh, I don't think it gets enough. Um, I don't think we put enough emphasis on how important it is, which is affirmations. Mm -hmm. I think for many people, affirmations may still seem a little woo woo. It may yeah, seem a little, yeah, yeah, a little hokey, whatever word you, you choose to use to describe something that you just don't really understand. Right. Uh, it, it's, it's a really powerful, again, neurological, uh, thing that you're doing. This is why uh, psych psychologists use affirmations and uh, it's, it's embedded in spirituality. It's embedded in so many aspects of the way we already live. So mm -hmm. the proof is there that it works, right? And, and literally what you're doing, the reason, I think it's helpful to understand why we're doing these things. The reason that it's really important to listen to affirmations is because you're changing the subconscious programming, right? And remember, you know, we have to remember that we are like, uh, like glaciers, Right. You know, the, the majority of what we see is below the surface. Uh, and so we have to the subconscious represents that which is below the surface. And so in order for us to change that, which is what is going to get to you changing your action, affirmations is an extremely powerful tool. So a habit that I have that I found, uh, I, I started doing this, I would say last year. So I've been doing this for about a year now is when I go to sleep at night, I actually have a YouTube channel that has uh, affirmations designed for nighttime. And, uh, and, and they're just, you know, you, you, know have, you have different topics. Some are related to anxiety, some are related to self-love, some are related to, uh, you know, uh, manifesting money, right? You know, or changing your, your attitudes about money. I just play them. I set my TV timer for, you know, 15 minutes. So they're, therefore the TV goes off at a certain time. And, and these are on a, like an eight hour loop and they're just positive affirmations. I, 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 I do feel that I can make, uh, money effortlessly. I believe that I am, you know, able to achieve my goals, you know, really simple statements that we may not necessarily find time to do during the day, but we can set our, you know, set our lifestyle up so that we find that time, perhaps when we're sleeping. And again, you're, you're literally, you're, you're working while you're asleep, you know, you're right. creating efficient ways to bring these habits into your lifestyle so that when you get to work, I always like to say what the goal with a flow state or really with life is to make your work your rest and make your rest your work. When you look at it like that, when you're working, it doesn't feel like work. It feels like rest. And now you actually have a new attitude about rest. You prioritize it as if it's work. And when you when you see things like that, everything becomes really effortless in application. Super interesting. And I'm a big believer about the positive affirmations as well. Yeah. You know, my, my goal is to make it where I'm just a positive person throughout my work day. And it's hard for most people. And I think that's a good segue in a few moments to another question I have for you. I feel it's hard for a lot of people. And I've been working on that myself is like, why would I not make my nine to five, like some of the happiest times I spend 80% yeah. of my time working. Right. So I'm a big believer in, in positive affirmations and, and I, I use them myself, um, like before presentations and stuff like that. And I do feel like it has an effect. And one thing you brought up that's really interesting to me in particular, you mentioned the flow state and how, you know, listening to your son and being in flow state when you have a conversation with him. I've got two kids. I've got a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old, two daughters, and they love to talk. And I feel I am far too distracted when I have conversations. And a lot of times it's work-related. Other times it's not. Maybe I'm cooking. But one of the things that I've thought about in the last two to three months is how when they want, need my attention, I should give them 100% of my attention because in 10 years from now, you know, I'm going to be praying for, for their attention. You know what I mean? And so I, I, that really resonated with me. And that's something that I'm going to kind of try to utilize a flow state more on the personal side versus just business. And I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. So I appreciate you bringing that up. And one thing I'll say about that too, um, you know, we have to give ourselves grace as yeah. well, right? Because, you know, our minds are, especially as entrepreneurs, we are constantly going. Like I'm finding myself oftentimes trying to do five different things at one time, even though my goal is to only be doing one. The reality is, is you know, we, we still have to multitask. And sometimes my son is talking and chattering away and I'm not paying attention. So I show myself grace during those moments and I don't beat myself up about it. But when I am, uh, when I remember, you know, when I notice that he really needs me to be focused on him, I know first step is to notice it. Right. Yep. It's to at some point notice it, which is why we have the lifestyle habits. Right. So that we can activate that awareness mm -hmm. easily. When you notice it, you just lock in for as long as you can and you do the best you can every single moment. You give yourself grace because none of us are perfect. And the more you sort of are intentional about seeing it that way, the more they will pick up those habits as well. Uh, no, I think that's 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 super interesting. And I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um, so let's talk about the kind of the remote world and mindfulness and flow state. And, and I feel like COVID rocked everybody's world. And honestly, I hadn't heard more about 
mental health and the the the, the importance thereof or how big of a deal it is, especially in, in the US um, since COVID. Like, I mean, I feel like people didn't really talk about it. Then COVID happened and then everybody kind of realized that like, we're in this together. It, like most people aren't happy during this period of time. Like how big of a deal is mindfulness in a remote setting? And, you know, what could companies do to kind of create a, I guess, a, a more mindful type of culture for their employees so they don't feel like they're an island uh, and completely isolated and on their yeah. own? Yeah, you know, organizations really have to be intentional about creating community, not creating, uh, but, but uh, you know, sort of uh, making sure that there is space for community. Um, and you're right, you know, remote, I've actually worked remotely for about 10 years. So prior to the pandemic, mm -hmm. I was working remotely um, and it can be very lonely, you know, for someone like me who, who kind of likes to be alone, I don't mind being in that environment. It's still, you have to, it, it requires a level of intentionality that, you know, that we don't really think about, you know, meaning when you're in the office, you are naturally surrounded by other people. So when you're at home, you have to be intentional about getting outside, about, you know, you know, having coffee chats for virtual or real, you know, working in different spaces. And so, you know, and, and a lot of that is individual. Uh, but I think organizations would really do themselves a major advantage by investing in mindfulness programs, meaning programs. And I offer one, you know, through mindful, mindful culture creators. I teach, you know, primarily in corporate spaces. Uh, I teach people how to develop mindful work habits for remote work specifically, you know, yeah. it's around, you know, again, everything that we're talking about, you know, really, you know, having those uh, giving, giving people the empowerment and sort of even using words like I give myself permission, you know, sort of having these cues for your employees, I give myself permission to put my phone in another room, I give myself permission to to turn my notifications off for one hour so that I could really get this task done without distraction. Uh, yeah. And I think as adults, we need those adult permission slips. And so in one of my classes that I teach, that's what we do at the end of the class. We all sign an adult permission slip and everyone writes in the thing that they're giving themselves permission to do. And I've even done it with teams, right? You know, for leaders to just sort of say that, you know, I give my team permission to not be on Zoom, right? To not be on video. If yeah. you don't feel comfortable being on video, if it causes you, you anxiety. So, you know, sort of being intentional about giving them giving them the permission to have that empowerment and autonomy because we take for granted that people are just empowered, right? You know, one of the things that COVID taught us is that there is a lot, as you said, there is a lot of mental stress and anxiety that exists in the world. Uh, it existed before COVID, COVID exacerbated it and it brought the solution to the surface, which is an amazing thing because uh, now mindfulness is not something that organizations and individuals shy away from. We're seeing the connection. We're seeing how it was all Always in whatever faith you have, there is some level of mindfulness in that faith if you choose to practice spirituality. If you believe more in science, mm -hmm. well, science has uh, has a way to explain mindfulness. If you believe in more sociology and more social ways of living, well, that has ways to explain mindfulness. And we're seeing that connection. Plus, we're seeing the data that tells us the benefit of it uh, from you know from the perspective of getting people again shifting mm -hmm. the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex so that we can achieve our results as organizations. So investing in mindfulness programs is a way to actually activate your strategy. It's a way to actually activate your people being emotionally connected to themselves so that when you introduce this big change, right, when you introduce this big change that may be we're ending remote work and we're actually wanting our employees to go back into the office, perhaps your employees are not so emotionally triggered by that. Perhaps now they have the tools to actually sit with that emotion, vocalize it, and then get, you know, change, perhaps change a thought perhaps change, you know, go from being anxious to accepting, from being stressed to adapting, right? Uh, and getting to resilience. But we, I think organizations take for granted that people are just going to get there. No, in our state, people need to be taught these things. And so investing in programs like mine is a really good way to do that. I, I think that's super interesting. And, and I agree. So I, I've worked remote for, I think, 16, maybe 16 and a half, 17 years, and it's not for everybody. And I feel it was a shock to the system for a lot of folks that had a traditional nine to five, because now all of a sudden you're going to this environment where there's not really many guardrails, but then there's like the ultimate guardrails because like, you know, work and life kind of like amalgamate and it's yep. really difficult because there's no separation of church and state. Like it's like you're available all the time. And I think the hardest thing that most folks struggle with is working too much, honestly. And I love the thought about the adult permission slip 
and, and I try to do that with myself as well. You've got to set, you know, barriers, parameters, what have you. Like, you know, for me, walking the dog, if, if I'm going to jump on a Zoom and somebody's not going to use their video, well, then you need to call my cell phone because yeah. I'm not going to be anchored to my desk. Yeah, yeah. Look at my computer to have a phone call with you if you can't turn your video on. Yeah. Um, and again, I don't care either way. But I, I think, you know, having having rules and like, a big thing for me is I don't take lunch breaks and I try to take lunch breaks. And so now I try to carve out 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes where I read, mindfulness or do something that breaks me away from work. Um, so you're not working. And I feel like far too many people with the remote situation, they literally just work the entire time. And then the bosses actually get a more productive employee, you know, so they're not telling them to calm down and, and stop contributing. So it, it's a, it's a really tough environment, especially for people that haven't worked as home as long as you and me, like I know what to do. I know when I mean overutilized and I need to walk away and I'll go hit golf balls or do something else. Cause I just got to take a break. Um, and also, too, then you have the more junior employees who feel like I've got to be tethered to my desk 24-7 on Slack, on instant message, because my boss may message me. They may say the, see the uh, the away icon on your instant message. So I, I think, you know, if companies could, you know, provide some grace to use your word from that perspective and maybe reinforce that some of this behavior is fine. And if you need a mental break, for God's sakes, take one. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I think organizations have to understand, you know, what is the goal? Right. Because we do have leaders that, you know, that do micromanage. Right. We do have yeah. leaders that manage to your availability and your status on uh, instant messaging tools. Uh, those types of leaders do exist. And if you are the employee being managed by that type of leader, the reason mindfulness and meditation is so important is because it helps you cultivate courage, because yeah. the reason that employees don't actually set boundaries uh, you know, boundaries that are in alignment with their role. So I'm not talking about, you know, taking a boundary to where you just take a five hour nap during the day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, boundaries that are in alignment with your role and being successful in that role. The 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 employees that don't do that, they're doing it because they're afraid. They're they're doing it. I mean, it's very, very simple, right? You know, we over we overcomplicate this. They're afraid that they're going to get in trouble. They're afraid that their brand is going to be damaged. They're afraid of a reputation uh, that that is now everyone's going to be thinking I'm insert you know the phrase right. Everyone's going to think we're so concerned about how others are going to perceive us that we stop actually living in our authenticity. And that is the thing that is going to allow you to achieve the greatest results. So if you are the employee that is struggling with courage, well, you know, enter the spaces that allow you to cultivate courage, um, you know, get with the communities that help you, you know, that pull you out of that fear so that you can transition. I always like to say in life, we're always moving out in and out of survival mode and into thrive mode. And you want to be in thrive mode as much as you can, understanding that every now and then you will be in survival mode. But if you spend your whole life in survival mode, you'll get the results of someone that spends their whole life in survival mode. And it's a miserable existence. I mean, it really, is. like, <laughs> it's exactly. look over your shoulder, worried, concerned. I mean, literally is the exact opposite of where I personally aspire to be. And that's, yes. you know, ha glass is, is, is half full, right? Or whatever. So uh, anyways, um, so Shante, how, how can people find you? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, Shante, S-H-A-W-N-T-A, -A, Hooks, uh, MBA, CPA. But if you just search my name, you'll find me on LinkedIn. I share a lot of content on LinkedIn mm -hmm. around, you know, how to incorporate mindfulness into your workday. Um, also on Instagram, Shante, the speaker, because I am a speaker as well. I give keynotes uh, that incorporate mindfulness and meditation, uh, not just from a, uh, a speaking perspective, but an actual practice perspective. Uh, so you can find me on Instagram and my website is mindfulculturecreators.com. Uh, and, you know, stay, stay in touch so that you can hear about some of the free events that I typically host throughout the month. That's awesome. We'll be sure to add some links to the, to the podcast. Truly appreciate the discussion, appreciate the time. And sincerely, I, I know you're going to crush it out there on the stage. <laughs> This is the timing is now for all this stuff. And yeah. I, I think I think it's great. So continue to do what you're doing and thanks for your time. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you.